Hey. Hi. Hi, this is Dr. Christine. And Dr. Colin. And we are your co-hosts for the exciting new podcast called Love, Love Scrubs, Scrubs, Scrubs and Stories, Stories, where we dive deep into the world of dating and relationships and go beyond the people wearing the white coats, the scrubs, and the stethoscopes. Come join us on this journey where we engage in dialogue and share stories of love, heartbreak, resilience, and triumphs. And we also navigate our professional lives with our hearts on our sleeves. Please remember to subscribe and hit the notification button to stay up to date on all future episodes. And, and we, we look, look forward, forward to, to seeing, seeing you inside. inside. Hey, Hello guys. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love, Scrubs, and Stories podcast. Thank you for joining us today. For those who aren't familiar, our podcast dives into all things dating and relationships, exploring love, heartbreak, resilience, triumph, and so much more, all through the lens of healthcare professionals. Hey guys, and thank you so much for taking the time out. You could have been anywhere else listening to any other dating and relationship podcast, but we are thrilled um, to have you guys um, on board. So thank you so much. So today we have a wonderful, wonderful topic. We're going to be talking about online dating versus, you know, matchmaking and the pros and cons to each. And we have a amazing, amazing expert. But before we bring her on, uh, Christine, you know, you and I, we've talked, we talk about online dating all day long, right? Exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's like, so it was a fun talk for us. You were the founder of White Coat Romance, and you know you have an amazing community. You and I have been through the gauntlet of online dating, but matchmaking. Have you done matchmaking before? You know, this is very new territory for me, but I'm very excited to learn all about matchmaking. And I mean, I've you know heard about the different types of matchmaking, some of it, albeit through Netflix with like Indian matchmaking <laughs> and Jewish matchmaking, where it's been like my biggest source of learning about matchmakers. But, you know, we I'm very excited that we have a guest expert who is a real matchmaker that, you know, you've met. And I would love to learn from her and kind of hear all about the whole process of matchmaking and what her experience has been. Colin, have you I, I don't have any experience with matchmaking, as you, you just heard. How about yourself? Have have you ever dive into the realm of matchmaking and you know and what are your thoughts on on all that yes i personally have used uh, matchmaking uh, before it is very very different from online dating i think you know talking to a expert uh, talking some talking to someone you know that can hold your hand and kind of guide you through the process they can help vet you know certain things and really dive deep in terms of you know what is it that you need and want and desire i think is a very interesting and very different process than just going about it on your own. Um, I personally like uh, matchmaking. You know, there are some nuances within. And so, you know, it's this is a great episode for those that, you know, are curious about it. I don't know if it's similar, you know, to Indian and Jewish <laughs> matchmaking. Those are very you know, cultural nuances. Um, sure. So we're, we're not gonna we're not gonna bring that you know to this episode. Um, or maybe we will. You never know. You know. <laughs> well, I would love to hear our guest experts' thoughts on it. Right? How does that you know? Does that seem to you know parallel what's happening in real life versus you know a Netflix show? Yeah, yeah, and it actually reminds me of this. Um, the very first instances that I remember from matchmaking is this. Wow, what is her name? Yeah, she does millionaire. She does oh, millionaire, millionaire matchmaker. matchmaker. Patty yeah, something. Patty something. Yes, right, right. Okay, yeah, that was Stanger. a big. <laughs> it was a big name for sure. That she's interesting. About. I like her because she's very. Um, she's very, very direct. Cutthroat. She's very yeah. like you know in your face and very direct. And she's like you know I, I like her. So, um, and sometimes you know it, I like it because. You have to be jolted once in a while um, in terms of, okay, this is like my type and, you know, this is typically what I, you know, go for, but it's cool to have someone objective to kind of jolt you and kind of like, you know, kind of like shake you a little bit and be like, let's uh, do a little bit different than what you're used to. And I think that's, you know, that's different. That's different and interesting of approach. May not be unique to every, you know, matchmaker, but uh, yeah, I think that's uh, interesting from from uh, understanding her, so. Yeah, it sounds like you need someone to just disrupt your way of thinking when it comes to mm -hmm. dating, right? Because like it hasn't worked so far, right? And so insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, right? And exactly. you know, this whole concept of matchmaking is, is especially like really interesting and exciting for me because I, you know, especially for professionals, right? High level professionals, we're all really busy. We may 
you know, not have the time <laughs> or maybe the patience to, mm -hmm. uh, to handle dating, whether it's online or in real life. And, you know, what is the best approach and, you know, and it helps to have uh, someone to help guide us along that path and also to save time too, because that's mm -hmm. something that is very limited resource, no matter who you yeah. are, you know? Oh, we have patience, just not in the form of, <laughs> not the <type> of patience, <laughs> but a bump. We have but, patience. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we definitely don't have the time, but we definitely have patience. So, so yeah, it might be a very, um, you know, t uh, efficient way of doing it. So let's, uh, I'm going to introduce our expert uh, without further ado. Okay. Her name is uh, Michelle G and she is a Tully award winner, certified matchmaker to the stars and author and host of an award winning TV show. She's anything but a ordinary uh, matchmaker and she has 96% success rate and many years of expertise helping countless of people find and keep the love that they want and improve the relationships with themselves. And she's the author of the number one bestselling book, Relationship SOS, Seven Lifelines to Rescue Your Emotional Intimacy Now. And she's been featured on Darcy and Stacy, TLC, NBC, Telemundo, VH1, and many, many other outlets. And she's uh, the host of the award-winning Fix My Love Life with Michelle G. So without further ado, we definitely want to uh, you know bring her on. Please say hello to Michelle. Hi, Hello. Michelle. How are you today? Oh my I'm goodness. What great. an honor. What an honor that oh. you've joined us. So accomplished. I heard your amazing bio from Colin <laughs> and I just can't be more excited. It makes me a little, a little blushed. I'm like, wow, that's, that's all me. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's, there's more you could probably say, but you know, I mean, we have to like just limit it. It's, you know, we have to, we don't, for time's sake. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I'm Love the little banter you guys are talking about with matchmaking and Jewish matchmaker and Indian matchmaker. And let's dive in because if there's one topic I love to talk about, it's definitely love. Awesome. Awesome. So let's let's get into it right away. You know, online dating, right? And you probably hear this in and out. And, you know, I follow you. You know, I've watched you interview other experts and, you know, being a guest yourself. You know, what would you say would be the three top challenges of online dating or just dating in general in the current, you know, modern era that we have? That's a great question, Colin. And I, I think I want to start by saying that the number one challenge that you're going to experience in online dating is that I think people don't stop to read another person and really, really ga gather the information that the person put on their profile. I think that this cripples people. Yes, I get it. There are some people who do not read. All they do is look at the pictures and they move on. But that's making a generalization that every, every woman or every man does that. And that is not true. I have so many clients who are clients that are amazing men, amazing women, and they actually take the time to fill out their bio, to share a little bit about themselves, to put thought and effort into it. And I think the biggest disservice when it comes to online dating and the challenges that we are so used to having everything right now that we end up just missing. If we were to stop and just take one, two minutes and actually be intentional with the people that were swiping and read about them, I think it would really change the experience of online dating for many people. The second challenge, and now I'll talk about just the dating landscape and is today, is the second challenge is that I think we have become a culture where we think, well, if it doesn't work out with this person, I could always jump back on Tinder or Bumble and I'm going to be able to find someone else. Like We have this idea that there are just endless and endless number of people. And the truth of it is, is that there isn't an endless group of people. We end up becoming illusions that there is because it's so accessible to us, you know, and then what happens is that at the same time, we experience the paradox of choice, which is too many options. You don't pick any, you just keep going through all the different options. And what that does is that it creates a pattern where you Either A, if you're not really clear on what you want, you're just going to just keep going through the motions. And B, you're going to more than likely experience dating fatigue. So that's generally. So go to go back to online dating. Number three, I would say, let's be real about our height, <laughs> weight, and how we love people. <laughs> 
I think that this is all the preferences, right? Problem. Yeah, we get yes. crazy with the number of preferences, you know, we expect oh that this God. is all going to be packaged in like one perfect person. Yes. It's like, let's be realistic. Okay. And let's be, let's be honest with ourselves. Like, let's be honest in terms of like, all right, you know what? I used to be, I'm going to say it. I have no problem. I used to be 115 pounds. Look, I'm a 41 year old woman. I've gained weight. I'm also older. My body's changed. I weigh 137 pounds and I am very proud of it. Look at that. Most women won't say that, but I'm okay with it. And here's the thing. The moment that you're okay with how you look, the moment that you're okay with what makes you beautiful and unique, both men and women, mm. oh my God, the difference that you approach dating with, like it's so different. And I think that that in, we live in a world where everything is a filter. Everything is all we show on social media is everything's fine and dandy and great. And the truth of it is that there isn't a day that there isn't one person that doesn't have a moment of struggle. We all have it. We're all part of this human experience. And I think that that's a challenge in itself. It's like, we're not being honest. And because we're not being honest, and we, ha we have this need to try and hide different aspects of ourselves. But here's the truth. Like at some point, you're going to get real with that person and they're going to see through all the bullshit, right? Mm -hmm. So you might as well just come forth and just be you. Like, and if it's not for you, <sighs> chao pescao, like we say in Spanish, chao. I'm not for you. It's okay. You know? I love it. I love it. The paradox of choice, when I, when I, when you said that, I was like thinking, well, this is kind of how like Netflix runs. You know, I could spend 45 minutes just trying to figure out what movie to play and I just end up not playing anything. Right. So <laughs> exactly. And, and it sounds like, you know, it's, you just kind of put yourself out there in terms of like taking the first step. And I think, mm -hmm. you know, being honest with yourself is very, very important from the get-go because if you're not even honest from the get-go, you could easily go into a pattern in relationship with that person leading in and beginning with dishonesty. So I think that's very mm -hmm. important points to bring up. Yeah, thank you for raising all those points. I mean, certainly there's a lot of challenges as you, have you've highlighted and, and some of the points that you made and especially love the point about like the energy that you bring you know, the energy that you put out, the energy that you put out is the energy that you'll get back. And so I think it's important Absolutely. to, to match that energy that you'd like to, to have received. And then the other point is that, you know, people say, oh, or people think the grass is, you know, greener on the other side or elsewhere, you know, but <clears throat> the reality is the grass is green where you water it. So. Yes. I love that. Absolutely. My husband. Yes, says Christine. <laughs> I think she might drop for that one for her. Yes, I like that. I like that. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just recoding someone amazing. <laughs> I love oh, it. Just take it. Just take it. Just take, it. Just take the compliment. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, I got to remind myself that, you know, because, you know, I myself am guilty of some of those things that you've mentioned, Michelle. <laughs> Aren't we all at some point, right? That's why we're all part of this to learn. That's why we listen to different podcasts. And I think that combining healthcare and talking about health is so important when it comes comes to dating i mean health our physical health our mental health relationship health i mean honestly like it's all integrated so yeah i'm i'm super excited that was a great question by the way colin <laughs> he always well, has the best questions i love it <laughs> um so a, a part of the bio that i did that i did not read is that you used to in a serve in the U u.s uh, military and um, i thought it was just brilliant in terms of you know, how does this person go from, you know, this kind of, you know, background into matchmaking? And I think the characteristics, you know, that makes up a good matchmaker is, you know, their own personal, you know, story, you know, in a way. So can you share a little bit on how did you make that transition and into matchmaking? Yes. So I served in the U.S. Marine Corps for 13 years and I was, uh, I worked in the field of intelligence. So some people will refer to it as like, oh, you were a spook, you were a spy. I worked in intelligence. I analyzed intelligence. I had the opportunity to work with a lot of different, in a, in a lot of different global conflicts and with amazing people that till this day are really, really great friends of mine. The whole reason I joined the Marine Corps was because I was, when I was a very small girl and my mom uh, had immigrated here from Ecuador, the one channel that we always had on the, on the house was um, C-SPAN because we were C-SPAN or NPR or PBS, sorry, because we were learning, <laughs> trying to learn English, right? And um, I remember that I one day became really enthralled on C-SPAN where I saw at the time President Ronald Reagan talking in front of Congress. And I was so just enthralled with how he 
commanded a room and how he was just at the center of everything. And I don't understand what he was saying, but but his body language really captivated me. And I remember mm. screaming and telling to my mom, telling my mom and calling her over and telling her, like pointing to the TV and being like, that's what I want to do when I grow up. And she's like, You want to be the president of the United States? <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I'm a, I'm like a six year old kid. Do I really understand what that means? Hell no, I don't. No way. <laughs> but my mom, you know, being the mom that she is, she's very supportive, and she's like, "Of course, darling." She's like, "You got to research. You know, you got to do really good in school." And so, in this process, I, I always stuck. That was always something that was in my heart. And what ended up happening was that the reason I joined the military was because I know that it would look favorable if at one day, if one day I wanted to run for office or I wanted to pursue that office specifically, it would be favorable for me to be able to know what it's like to serve the country that I want to serve in a different capacity. Like anything else, you know, you go into, you, you take that first step towards a career. And, you know, I had all these big plans. And what happened? Well, you know, Cupid's arrow got me. I fell in love. I fell in love with this boy. Um, and I thought that he was going to be like, okay, like we're going to fall in love or, you know, we're going to do the thing and everything's going to be great and perfect. And have run into the sunset. <laughs> right. <laughs> run into the sunset. Yeah. I like that. You know, all of that. And it didn't turn out to be that way. It turned out that we got married. We weren't aligned in a lot of different areas and values. I was doing really well in my career. I got to a place where I was talking to people who had a lot of rank in their collar, talking to ambassadors, talking to world leaders about very serious policies and topics. And it was interesting to me that I was able to influence the decision that these individuals that we were all huddling and trying to make a decision about and being able to present perspectives to influence their decision. But yet when I got home from work, I couldn't get my ex-husband to pick up the socks off the floor. And yeah. that was kind of like a, whoa, what, what transpired? What's going on? How is it that I'm doing so great on my career and my marriage is like tanking? Like this doesn't make sense. And so there was a choice to be made for me. My career at the time came to a crossroads. My marriage came to a crossroads and I made the decision. It was a very difficult decision to have to walk away from that marriage for several reasons. We weren't aligned, like I said, in different values. We wanted different things. And at the end of the day, we just weren't the right fit for one another. But the process of divorce, you know, you, my girlfriend says, the person that you marry isn't the person that you're going to divorce. That person really does transform. And it's mm. not because they're a bad person. It's honestly, it's like a breakup. It's like two people are hurt. And sometimes two people don't know how to express their hurt. And so they do it in ways that are unhealthy. That entire divorce process changed me. It changed just the way I thought. It changed how I viewed relationships. And it really was the momentum to get me to move into a career where I would have the opportunity to work with people in their relationships, because I was able to, I was able to build relationships with foreign nations and ambassadors and bring people together and that. So why couldn't I do something where I could really touch lives and have more of, you know, be able to see results more, in, more instantaneously versus, you know, you go through policies and it takes forever. And I, I just wanted to help people based on the experience that I had went through. So I went back to school and got my degree in social psychology. I became a certified through the American Psychotherapy Association. And I started working initially with couples, which is where the book came from, was from all the stories of the couples and the marriages that I was able to support, whether they decided to continue in their marriage together or they decided to part ways, they were able to do it in a healthy way and have better communication skills. What happened was that the market began to tell me, hey, you know what? I walked away from this marriage. I feel great. I'm reconnecting with me. You got to know some amazing people. You're an amazing person. You have to have an amazing network. And I was like, yeah, let me, you know, let me look around. So I started kind of doing matchmaking as kind of like a trial thing, to be honest with you. I never really thought of it as matchmaking. And then I did some research. I'm a nerd. So I was like, you know what? I got to go to school. I got to get certified in this. And I did. I got certified through the Matchmaking Institute in New York City. And I got my certification and I began really focusing on matchmaking and learning about how it is that, what does it take to bring people together? What's the recipe? Is there a secret ingredient? And I think, you know, if we were to, if you were to ask me that question, I think the secret ingredient is each individual and what we bring to the table, but we got to know what it is that we bring to the table. We got to mm. be crystal clear on that.
And so honestly, I ended up just kind of falling into matchmaking. It wasn't like my, like my goals were so different. And I felt that really God, the universe led me down this path. Mm. And I find it very fulfilling and very loving career. I get invited to weddings. I get to, you know, see people grow together. I get to hear about them moving in together. I get to hear about them wanting to have a child. I get to hear about them traveling. Like, you know, I, I get to be a part of that. And I, I feel very blessed and for- fortunate to be able to be a part of someone's story, my team and I, because I, I sure as hell don't do this alone. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what an amazing story. Thank you so much, Michelle, for sharing it with us. I loved it. And so for those of us who aren't familiar with like what a matchmaker does, aside from Netflix, you know, that we learn from, uh, take us through your day and, and how would you go about in, in guiding someone, you know, who yeah. would have like you, for example, as a yeah. matchmaker, like what are the steps that you take to help guide somebody? And how does that compare to online dating? Like what are the differences? Yeah. So I think I'm going to start with uh, Colin's question first. The, the difference between online dating and matchmaking, honestly, is that you have an algorithm versus you have a person right? An algorithm can only do so much. When you're talking to a person, that human connection, that ability, the nuances, the micro expressions, the the things, the subtext behind what it is that you may be saying, all those different things is something that an algorithm can't pick up. You can't pick that up on black and white text, but you can definitely pick that up with a person. So the biggest difference is, do you want someone to be able to do the filtering, the vetting for you, the background checking for you? Or do you want an algorithm to pick based off of, you know, both of you want to have kids, both of you are in the same area, within 25 miles, and both of you like these same items. And we think that this is what you're going to find interesting or attractive, right? There's a lot more personalization. So in terms of your question, Christine, you brought up Indian matchmaking and Jewish matchmaking. And I, I really do love those shows. And I appreciate my colleague, both of them, because not only are they women that have experience in this, but I love the fact that it's very niche. And, and I will tell you that there are some similarities between how we match in terms of, you know, specifically the questions and part of the intake process, as you can see, like getting to know someone, coaching them, or giving them a little bit, you know, really sometimes challenging what it is that they're asking for. And we don't do it as matchmakers, because we want to be pain in your asses. We do it because we want to challenge you to know why it is, why is it so important that this man or this woman be this height? Why is it so important that they are this exactly? Like, you know, we want to really understand. And I, and I see that in um, the shows, they do display that. Now what the differences are is absolutely, you know, when you're, when you're speaking to a very specific population, right? For example, the Indian matchmaker, she really focuses on and, and utilizes tools that are very familiar to the population, things that are part of their upbringing, things that are not foreign to their culture. And I think that that is beautiful. And then you have the Jewish matchmaker who focuses on a spectrum of different Jewish singles. And I think that one of the greatest things is, again, she understands their culture. She she is Jewish herself. She can really relate. She knows the right questions to ask. And that is something that I feel really does is showcased very beautifully in both of those shows. For example, in our process, we do everything that's very science-based. We put people through different types of personality tests. We want to understand not only how they see the world, but how the world sees them as well. We don't match just on lifestyles and preferences. And we ask about those things, but I really want to know and get insight into what are the core values that drive you and what are the core values that you're looking for in a partner, right? There are clients who have different items or different requirements, I should say, that are vary from client to client. That's something that's very personal and that we really talk about with our clients during that one-on-one intake. But my day, you know, I spend talking to a lot of people. I mean, I'm on the phone probably for five to six hours a day, right? talking to people about, oh my God, I met this guy, right? I have some clients, I met this guy and this happens and then he disappeared. Why did he do this? Like, I'm really hurt about this. And then I have people who call us who are like, listen, I'm just tired with online dating. Like I'm over it. I need a matchmaker. I've seen Indian or Jewish matchmaker. Can you help me? Like, I really need help, right? And and just learning about people's challenges and struggles. And I think one of the ways that I love to connect with people is that I really like to listen because sometimes we just need to be heard. Honestly, sometimes we need to be heard and then we just need that reflected back to us. And sometimes 
we may not be ready for the journey ahead. And I totally respect that because it is a very personal journey, matchmaking, right? You're going to, you're going to talk about money. You're going to talk about sex. You're going to talk about preferences. You're, you're going to talk about all kinds of stuff. All so, the things. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So looking, yeah. On the surface, going deeper, mm-hmm. looking under the hood, you know, I mean, there are just things sometimes that I think are just hitting in our subconscious that it sounds like you've been able to pull out that's really crucial in order for your client to move forward and find Mm -hmm. that person. The Loves, Girls, and Stories podcast is a collaboration and co-production between The Chef Doc and White Coat Romance. The Chef Doc is a wellness platform that offers innovative approaches to thriving and offers a self-empowerment book, podcast series, on-demand masterclass series, as well as a brand new app. The app provides self-guided education such as food as medicine, self-care, and resilience. Coaching services are also available, whether you prefer one-on-one or group type settings. Please go now to your app store, as well as Apple as Google Play to download for free. White Coat Romance is a dating app for healthcare and health-related professionals and students in the U.S. and Canada. It's a lively space where you can find love, companionship, and build meaningful connections with like-minded professionals. If you're single, go to the App Store and Google Play to download and join our vibrant community. As we both serve these amazing communities, we also acknowledge the value of continuing education. Therefore, we're super excited to share an enticing opportunity with our listeners. Our episodes are continuing education eligible. That's right. You now have the opportunity to earn valuable credits while enjoying our content. Rest assured, the episodes will always remain free as we are committed to supporting our communities and amplifying the voices of healthcare professionals. To get a better understanding of how this works, the first three episodes are free to obtain, then the rest of the podcast episodes are at a nominal cost. So you might be asking who can earn credits? Well, physicians, nurses, nurse practitioners, physicians associates, pharmacists, dentists, as well as dietitians and dietetic technicians. If you find yourself in need of CE credits, we kindly ask you to consider directing your CE funds towards supporting our cause. Your contribution would greatly help us nurture our podcast production and continue to bring you valuable content. We are deeply grateful for your support. From all of us here at Love Scrubs and Stories Podcast, thank you so much for choosing us. And enjoy the rest of this episode. And the thing is, what you're saying, Christine, hits the nail on the head because, you know, one thing that I sum it up and I tell every person I speak to, it's like, hey, the first match has to be between you and I. Because if we don't have a good match between you and I, then guess what? This relationship is not going to work. I need for you to be able to trust me as much as I'm trusting you. And so I honestly, like, matchmaking is something that is for for us, for, you know, we're not a Tinder, right? (laughs) You want to go on endless amounts of dates? That's not us. We work with people who are really serious and committed and looking for their special someone. Um, yeah, you actually, uh, actually, you know, I was about to transition to the next question. Like, what, what is matchmaking not? Uh, or, you know, some of the myths that, you know, common people would hear about it. And, you know, what is it not? And I mean, who is it not for, would you say? Yeah, matchmaking is not for a person who is a serial dater, if you just want to be introduced to people after person after person, and you're like, well, you know, I have a relationship happens, I'm open to it. Yeah, don't, don't, don't call me. I'm not your person. I will tell you, uh, go find an online dating site for that go to a bar, go to a club, go, go golfing, go to different places where you can meet people, because that's not us. I, I, we're not we're not a, a build a bay, right? All of a sudden you do, 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 put it in and we just <laughs> pop out matches for you. No, there's a lot, there's a craft to this work. You know, we we work with with serious professionals. I've had the experience and the blessing to work with celebrities, high profile entrepreneurs, you know, professionals, people in different fields. And the one common denominator is that there are people who are looking for something serious and they may not always be clear on what they're looking for, but that's my job as a matchmaker. Kind of like Mm. what Christine said earlier to, you know, let's see what's under the hood. Let's let me, let me help pull it out of you. Let me make sure that I'm understanding what you're looking for. I love it. Thank you so much. And it just really shows just listening to you and your thought processes and how you guide your clients. I mean, it's not, not a surprise at all. 96% success rate. I mean, that's, Incredible. So you must have plenty of success stories. Would you like to share one of them with our audience? Yes, I have so many. Okay, I'll share. I'll share. She gets so many wedding invites. She's like, (laughs) like, I can't attend attend to all of them. (laughs) (laughs) I, you know, I'll tell you one. I'll tell you 
really two short ones. Let me tell you the first one. It's going to be literally one minute, not even 30 seconds. I met this woman in Orange County. She has, she was an entrepreneur, had her own successful marketing company. And she also ran a woman's group in Orange County. She had been in and out of relationships and on and off with this guy for seven years. I meet her for lunch and literally she sits down, she orders a bourbon. I sit down, I think I had a glass of wine with her. And I said to her within five minutes of our conversation, I said, I have the perfect guy for you. I know who he is. And she's like, what? Get the hell out of here. You, you lying to me, girl. <laughs> I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, if you're really open, I was like, if you were really open and you trust me, I am really serious about this. She's like, okay, sure. Turns out he, what he is a, he was a Marine. He retired. He was a Marine. And at the time he was in Okinawa, Japan. I'm not kidding you. And she is in Orange County, California. And I said, listen, just trust me. What's the worst that could happen? Let me introduce you through Facebook. We'll see how the conversation goes. If it doesn't go anywhere, no worries. There's plenty of other men that I can match you with, but I have a really good feeling about this. Yeah, 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 Michelle, whatever. Uh, 30, 45 days later, they met in Virginia. Three months later, she went to Japan. He proposed. Six months later, they they were engaged, and then they got married. And I was able to read during their wedding. Wow. You know what I'm saying? This is like, like crazy. She's in California, and he's in... Japan. It was insane. How did you know? I'm just trying to think like what what's going through, you know, your brain and like just she has like all a the Rolodex gears. of <laughs> like, <laughs> I do. I, I mean I, I, I talk to so many singles all the time that I do I keep people in my mind or I don't know, something just sparks. In that particular case, what I will tell you was it was just something very, very interesting that she had shared with me during our previous conversation. Remember I had already spoken to her and we were meeting for lunch to kind of like just hash out any last minute details and talk about some other things. But one of the things that she had shared with me was that she's like, look, I'm not looking for a man. I I would prefer to date a man who's already been through the gauntlet, meaning like he's done personal work on himself, but he's also has experience with being married or being in a long-term relationship. I want a man who has a good head on his shoulders. She's like, he doesn't, he, he doesn't have to make more than I do. She's like, I make pretty good money. I'm not looking for him to support me. And then she said one thing. She's like, I want for this man to just want to experience new cultures and new things, right? I She has a very small family. She lost her, her dad and a couple of other very close relatives to her. So she's like, I really would love for him to have really great relationship with his family and, and all these things. And so as she shared all these things with me, I went through my head and I was like, duh, 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 duh. I got like four guys. And then she ordered the bourbon. So out of my four guys, none of them are bourbon drinkers, but one. And I was wow. like, tell me about this bourbon thing. Huh? It was the bourbon. It was the bourbon. It was the bourbon. It was oh, the bourbon. Yeah. And she's like, oh, I love bourbon. I go to bourbon tastings. And I knew that this person I was thinking about Number four, I was like, he loves bourbon. Like he also goes into this. I'm like, this is something that could be like a first date. Okay. We, you know, they, we can, we can match them on that. I mean, they align in other areas, but I felt like, okay, bourbons are very, like there are particular tastes of people that are are very specific. And when two people really invest in those types of, of activities, it's because they're passionate about it. It was the bourbon. That's Brilliant. interesting because what I clearly just got from that short story is, uh, thank you for sharing, is mm-hmm. that you know, unlike online dating, you're not going to know. It's harder for, to to understand what someone prioritizes and how much weight they put into mm-hmm. a certain either goal, dream, hobby, passion. Like that's very hard to decipher from you know a two dimensional profile on online dating versus you, you know, you're able to tease out, you know, what is it that they're really like really into and the nuances, right? Like you just talked about, you know, I mean, if you're, you're a bourbon drinker, there's, you know, you can really go deep uh, into yes. that. Yes. I learned a whole lot of things about bourbon that day that I had no clue about. <laughs> <laughs> I love that story. And did you want to quickly share the second success story that you mentioned? Yes. So here's the second success story. My tech entrepreneur, 
he is just this doll. I mean, he is a genius. He went to college at the age of 11. So he's not your typical entrepreneur. He's not your typical gentleman. He is actually um, very smart, intellectual, really down to earth, sweet, humble. But when it comes to a specific area of his life, when it comes to dating, he has zero to no experience, honestly. So he hired me to help him polish these skills and also to help him meet someone. Match number three, let's let's put it out there. Match number three. He's like, oh my God, I, I feel something. I really like her. I think she's really great, you know, but but I'm, I'm in my head about things, Michelle. Like, you know, uh, how, how, how about these things? Like, I don't have a lot of experience in dating. Do I tell her about all these things, right? So it, it's a combination of, of, I'm not only a matchmaker, I'm also your dating coach, right? I also role play some of these things with you because let's face it, practice, it's not about making it perfect. It's about making it easier, right? It's about being able to know and be present in the moment. Long story short, he is like, I think she likes me, but I'm not really sure. And I'm like, I'm telling him, I'm not going to say my client's name, but I'm going to say client X. I'm a woman. I'm telling you right now, these are all the telltale signs. She does like you. So if you ask her out, I promise you, she's going to say yes. Oh, you know what, Michelle, but, but you know, what if she's just being nice to me because we're part of the same youth group and all this other stuff, you know, we're doing things. And I'm like, okay, how about this? I'm like, ask her out. What's the worst that she could say? No. All right. What happens if she says no? We move on to the next person. Exactly. And what does that mean? Well, it means that she wasn't the right fit for me. That's right. And that is okay. I'm not the cup of, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. That's okay. That just, she just closing that opportunity and may, and putting you one step closer to the person that's for you. He gets in his head. He sends, he's on the date. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry. He's it's getting a fear of rejection, right? Yeah, it's a yes. fear of rejection that, that, yeah, that terrifies, like. Yeah, that and analysis par- paralysis because he's a tech entrepreneur. So he's going to be in his head. Yes, he's in his head. So he's getting ready to ask her the question, getting ready to ask her out. They're part of this community group together. So they see each other several times a week. And he sends me a message and he's like, okay, he's like, I'm taking, I'm practicing the tools that you gave me. I'm taking a restroom break. I'm I'm organizing my thoughts. I'm going to do it. And I say, go for it. You got this. Remember, you can do this. This is not hard, right? We are just going to say these things. We've practiced the script. You know how to do this. I get a text message at 11 o'clock at night. Oh my God. She said yes to the first day. Okay. (laughs) This is now he was like super ecstatic because he does not have a lot of experience in dating. Let's fast forward. They've been seeing each other now for 90 days. And he officially has asked her to be his girlfriend. Oh, so sweet. I love that you story. See? Oh, my God. I know. I get to be a part of that. Yeah, it's so heartwarming. And yeah, and I can see how like you're really warm and bubbly and very encouraging to help your clients get to that point. I don't and remember my warm, online dating app being warm and bubbly and all that <laughs> and all that goodness. <laughs> 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 so we're just looking at time and we want to, you know, bring this to a close. Thank you so, so much for uh, taking the time out and, and sharing the success stories. So what would you say makes your particular matchmaking service uh, unique? And uh, what does, you know, what does, what does Michelle, you know, G bring to the table if people were to, you know, pursue your mm-hmm. services? The first thing that I would say that Michelle G brings to the table along with her team is the fact that there is no other matchmaker who is a Marine who has done the things that I have been able to do to be able to get training from three letter agencies to read people with the experience, like a global experience of dealing with different personalities and having the experience in conflict resolution. You won't find that. That makes me unique as a matchmaker. And I bring that to the business. And in terms of what makes us as a collective, the incredible love team, you know, each of us have a degree in our respective areas. I, we're an all women team, right? So we are able to really understand the needs that men and women come to us with. And I think what's most importantly is that we're very customer focused, very customer centric. Everything that we do is science-based. We, you know what I mean? We're always keeping our pulse on what is the latest research, right? What's changing in the marketplace? How is AI, you know, which we didn't even touch on, but how is artificial intelligence and chat GBT and all these different new applications coming online? How is it that it's going to change the dating world? Well, it it is going to change dating. We got to get ready for the next 
third or fourth evolution in dating. And I feel like that's, you know, we're always staying on top of what's new, what's out there, what's new, what's out there, you know, because if we can't stay behind because our clients are relying on us to be able to help them reach their goals. And the way that we do that is by making sure that we have a great understanding and an ample understanding of the landscape itself. Yeah, absolutely. AI is going to disrupt all industries, including dating. And it's going to be very exciting to see where this is. We literally go. just had, we had this conversation offline, like just moments before, <laughs> before, uh, <laughs> you know, your, 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 your uh, this, this session. So it's, uh, yeah, I was telling I was telling her I was like I don't want it to be a Terminator Two Judgment Day type of you know <laughs> you know type of scenario. I, I feel like that's what's going to happen. So, but the thing is, is that like what I love about this is that you know you emphasize you know just just to kind of bring it home is that you emphasize bringing uh, yourself, showing up as yourself, and making sure you put in the effort. And I feel like a part mm-hmm. of online dating, which I don't personally like, is that it gives people a way to kind of minimize or give an excuse of not putting in effort. And Mm -hmm. it sounds like through your process, you know, you know, you have to keep it real. You have to be honest and you really have to, you know, put in the work, you know, and we did talk a little bit about, you know, uh, working on yourselves and how, you know, how that could come through and in terms of attracting the right match. Absolutely. A hundred percent, a hundred percent, Colin. And let me tell you, I, I'd love to pick your brain. Like what, what, from just personal experience, what's the biggest challenge? Christine, are you online dating? What's your biggest challenge with online dating? Colin, I want to hear yours too. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I like the raw, I like what she did right there. <laughs> it's like, I'm going to turn first. the tables on you two here. You single folks <laughs> yeah. here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You, you know, I'm, oh. Oh, where do I begin with online dating? You know, I am you know, in this space, right? I'm, you know, the founder of Wet Coat Romance. And, you know, we have our Facebook community and now we have our, our dating apps. So I'm very much in that space. And I am, I am like in four different dating apps right now, you know? And uh, <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to put myself out there. You know, I, I got to practice what I preach. And um, certainly I have, you know, there are things about online dating that is just so frustrating for me as well as everybody else. And I think most of us don't love online dating, but we don't have to like hate it, right? It's a strong word. Mm -hmm. Um, It's here to stay. And there are things that we can do to make it work for us. It's a very powerful tool. For sure. It's the the, the lack of, it's just the paradox of choice, you know, Mm -hmm. the lack of follow through, a lot of scammers and bots, you know, and it would be nice, especially, you know, being so busy, um, like all of us, be nice to have someone like you, you know, to help guide us and, and, steer towards a certain direction and I think part of it is just to kind of help us like figure out like what's important to us right because we can Mm -hmm. say you know I like x y and z these are my needs and my wants right and the list can like go on forever right this like checklist um but it's not realistic and it's important to really like hone it in and figure out like what are the top you know things like your core values and you know your life goals so absolutely all right (laughs) <laughs> Mine are, you know, to echo what she says, like, I, I'm, uh, I don't like, you know, how over online dating, it's been more, you know, bots and scammers and, you know, just a different way for people to like cheat you. When a lot of us, you know, on online dating are there to look for genuine bona fide relationships, you know, and to be in more long term partnerships. Mm-hmm. I honestly, you know, I if it were me, I wouldn't do online dating. I really miss the the art of conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, I love to, you know, just kind of like gab back and forth. You know, that's why I host my own podcast. And that's why I'm just like, you know, just really, uh, I'm really, I'm more extroverted. I'm more sh- social. I'm on online dating apps as well. And yeah, it's the, it's the missing you know, connection of uh, just being in the same room with someone um, and having that real good conversation and that synergy, you know, or lack mm-hmm. there of synergy that tells you right away whether you can connect with someone or not. So that's what I miss. And that's, you know, I don't, I don't like all that dating at all. <laughs> It's it's tough. Yeah. So um, gosh, this has been so much fun, Michelle, as much as you know, we'd love to continue. And there's like so much, so many more topics and things we can dive into and things, uh, pearls of wisdom that you can share with us. But I think we should wrap it up. Or do you have any like just maybe your top three take home points that you'd like to share with our audience? 
And then lastly, like how um, our audience, should they want to reach out to you and how do they get in touch with you? Yeah. Um, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. And for everyone who's listening, I really do appreciate you spending this time with us. It, you know, it, investing, the, the number one point is like you get you get out of something what you invest in it, right? If you take the time and the opportunity to really be intentional, like intentional about what it is that you're looking for, what it is that you're really wanting, you're going to have to kiss a couple of frogs on the way. But I promise you that the universe, energy, God, source will conspire to help you reach what it is that you want. It's about really being intentional, dating with intention. That's the first takeaway point. The second takeaway point I would say is um, hey, it's okay if you need to take a break from dating. Like, don't feel pressure. I think there's a lot of pressure around like, oh, I'm at this age group and oh my God, I'm so close to, to my eggs are not going to work anymore. And like, oh my God, like my parents expect this. Like, there's a lot of pressure, you know, that just we don't even recognize through movies, through media, through music. There's so many different ways that we're constantly being, we're constantly absorbing and we don't even recognize it. It's okay to take a break to recalibrate and recenter and refocus. And last but not least, I would say if you're really trying to figure out what it is that you're looking for, what's the number one quality that you're looking for in a relationship, then I invite everyone to head over to incrediblepartnerquiz.com. And it's the quiz that we have to help you identify what out of the seven key life values that we match people on, what specifically is the number one key life value that's important for you in a relationship. And you can take the quiz. It gives you a response right then and there. You you have an idea of like, okay, this is the number one thing that's important to me. And sometimes knowing that changes the game for so many people. Anyone who wants to follow me, you can follow me on Instagram at love by Michelle G on all social media ch uh, channels. And I invite you to head over our website, incrediblelove.com. You can connect with me, the team. We're always excited to talk, talk about love, talk about matching. You know, that's our business. I love, I love it. Business. I love it. I love it so much. Oh, we for, forgot to do the rapid fire. We we want to get to know, you know, Michelle G a little bit Ooh. more. So, all right. Christine, let's are you ready it. with your rapid yes, fire? Yes, yes. All rapid right. Fire? So, you go first. Okay. We're just going to come at you. We alternate. Okay, Michelle, and just roll with it. Kay. Just whatever comes to mind. Don't overthink it. All right. Comedy club or live concert? Ooh, live concert. Deal breaker for you bad breath or bad fashion sense? Ooh, bad breath. I can fix <laughs> the fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Phone call or text message? Phone call all day, every day. I'm a 90s baby. Phone yeah. call. <laughs> <laughs> what is your uh, go-to uh, karaoke song for a cheesy serenade? Oh, my God. What is that song with that he sang to Chrissy Teigen? Oh, I love that song. Oh, John Legend. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, John, John Legend, Legend, yes. I actually serenaded my husband to that song, and I was crying. And the whole, I mean, I can't sing, but it's perfect. it was a beautiful gesture. <laughs> Okay. 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 Yes, I, we all love that song. Okay, spicy. I don't food. think any. I don't think anything is cheesy by John Legend. But <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Christine. <laughs> okay, next one: spicy food or sweet treats? Ooh, spicy food. Mm. Are you a early bird or a night owl? I'm both, actually. So I can literally wake up at. 5 a.m., but I can actually go to sleep. Like I get the most creative between 11 and one o'clock in the morning, believe it or not. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Last one for me. Sunrise hike or midnight stargazing? Mm. <laughs> You're like, tough mm. one. Can I have both? That's a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's one. Is the option. <laughs> okay. I, I think I'll do midnight stargazing. And uh, last one for me. Uh, would you rather cook together or dining out? Cook together. Excellent. I love, Excellent. love cooking. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so so much michelle um it's been a great pleasure a great privilege you know to have you on and you. uh you know for the audience that are listening please check her out if you're curious about matchmaking um you know then you know it's right there and uh yeah she's on social media you know just look her up and uh yeah it's uh it's always a blast thank you so so much christine do you have any last uh, questions uh, yeah for, uh, thank michelle? you again Michelle, I appreciate you coming on. It's been truly an honor. Um, and for our audience, don't forget to like, uh, subscribe, and review this podcast. And we'd love to be able to uh, share more content with you all. So uh, till next time, everyone.
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching and listening to this channel. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you felt like this was a benefit for someone else, please let them know as well. As a reminder, this channel does not offer medical advice. All opinions expressed are ours and our guests only. It is for general informational purposes only and does not replace professional healthcare services. Please consult your own healthcare provider for any medical issues you may have. Until the next episode, whether you're in and out of your scrubs, Please remember to love yourself and others and leave with kindness. Bye. Bye.